Hi, my name is Zach Miller. I'm with Nelson Fire Systems. We're going to go over how the fire alarm system works here at the Salt Lake Community College Instructional Administration Building. In here, we're in the northeast electrical room on the first floor where the main fire alarm control panel is. We've got our LCD display and our uh, what they call an ASM 16 where we have some disable switches, things like that for maintenance personnel to, to be able to bypass the system for when they need to work on it, or for me for what I need to work on it. Uh, inside of here there's what they call an IOIMB, which is the motherboard for the system, and there's also a board called a PM9, which is the power supply for that board, and the power supply for this board. Those are these two boards right here. Which one? Which? This is the motherboard, the IOIMB, and this is a PM9. This board right here is called a repeater. And it's in here so that it communicates with the other voice cards, which are the other panels, like this one that we have right here. This is called an INX. And when we basically when we have an alarm, we have input devices that are smoke detectors, a water flow switch, or pull stations. We get that information into this panel. It basically communicates to this panel and says, okay, we now have a fire alarm condition. We need to activate all the outputs and then we have these AM50 amplifiers which all of our speakers connect to. And also at the same time we have other power supplies which are these Fire Force 8s and the motherboard in the fire alarm panel also tells these power supplies to activate the strobes that are also part of the speaker strobe combination devices. So. Each one of these all has battery backup, and they're all, there's another one of these, an INX board, and the power supply panel on the second floor and the third floor, both in the northeast electrical room. And they basically have the same thing. This is your battery cabinet? Battery cabinet, yep. Okay. I think we should go out to the front now where the uh, local operator's console is. Okay, we're now in the south main entry where our local operator's console is. This is probably where the fire department will respond and others will respond in the event of a fire alarm. We've got the same uh, display out here where we can, if there's a problem on the system, we can have a trouble acknowledge. When we have an alarm, we will do an alarm acknowledge. Once we've verified that there is no fire condition, we can hit signal silence as well as do a system reset. Um, you can also do any of the menu functions from here. Our level one password is 1111, and then level two passwords. So walk test is a level one. Clock, we could change the clock options in here. If we need to check the log, we can also go into the display. That's a level two, which is two, 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 two. And it will display log. And we can go through any of our problems. Our rescue assistance panel, our favorite. And also we have a microphone here. If, uh, if somebody comes in and there's a fire alarm and they don't want occupants to evacuate because they know it's a false alarm or if they want to say something on top of a fire alarm condition that's already going on, they can pick up this microphone. They have to hit this building all call button first. Once that's been activated, that activates this mic and you can key the mic and talk to the entire building over this microphone. So, once you're done, you'll want to push that button again. That way, nobody can come along and pick up the microphone. And well, in this entry, we also have this rescue assistance panel. There is a call station at each elevator lobby on each floor, east and west. Uh, it's basically for handicapped occupants. If the, there's a fire condition that has recalled the elevator, they can hit the button by the elevator and it will call down to this panel. And it's a two-way communication system so that if they are in need of assistance, uh, someone can get to them and uh, help you get out of the building in any kind of emergency situation. So, 
all you have to do basically there, there's a button that's pushed over there, it's going to come up over here. You hit the button corresponding with that. It'll be beep, beeping right here at you too. And then once you're done, you can push this button and then you just reset the zones and it'll all go back to normal. Also, might note too, when you reset a fire alarm, the reset button needs to be held in probably for at least five seconds. Once the display says resetting, then you know you've reset the system. And you'll also want to verify that the alarm condition has also been corrected before you reset the panel. If someone's pulled a pull station, there's a switch inside the pull station that will want to be reset before you reset the panel. We have a, a building map. So when we have a fire alarm condition, it comes up with an address number, which you could correspond with on this map. So let's say if we had smoke detector L1SO16 going to alarm, it'll say that on here as well as level one uh, southeast wing. So you can find it on the map and associate it with the display to help find the location of wherever the problem is. We've got some newer pole stations also in this building. Uh, once they've been activated, this will be down and it will say activated along the top here. I obviously don't want to activate it. But to reset these, all you simply have to do is have the same key as the, the, the same as the panel. And you can open it and then just close it and it automatically resets the switch inside. So it's just a matter of opening the pole station. and The switch is right here. It'll be in the down position, but once you close the door, it automatically flips the switch back into the up position, so you then reset the panel. Okay, so I'm John Harvey with Johnson Controls. Today we're going to talk about the firefighter smoke control panel real quickly. Uh, basically, there's a smoke control panel right here. Uh, a couple things. When we receive an input from the fire alarm system that there's either uh, flow in the atrium uh, water detector or smoke in the atrium smoke detector, it gives us a signal uh, to this panel. This panel then will open up both sets of doors. This set of doors here, that set of doors there, and open up all of the windows in the building. When that happens, it then shuts, uh, and then it opens up all these dampers along the shaft up here and to bring them fresh air, and then we enable the smoke exhaust fans, the three fans up on the roof. Um, that way we're able to purge the air out of the, or the smoke out of the door. The firefighter smoke control panel has the ability for the firefighter to come in they can open up this panel here and they can make modifications to the system as necessary to control that area of the smoke. They can either open and close doors and open and close individual levels of windows or dampers um, and also turn on and off each of the exhaust fan. Um, a couple things, so there is a lamp test button so you can verify that all the test, all the lamps or all the LEDs do work. You press the button it will shine all the lights for a second. Um, there's a, a switch here, an auto and a firefighter control. The purpose of that is, is if any of these buttons are left in a non-auto position, when it's an auto, this panel will consistently give you a buzzing noise so you know that something's not in auto, something's overridden manually. If the firefighter wants to come in here, they can simply take this, or if you wanted to test something, you turn up the firefighter control, you can now override any one of these um, dampers or windows or anything like that um, in the panel. Um, basically, so on, as far as the LEDs real quick, you have the, this one right here, there's four, four different dampers. This is a smoke damper 01, which feeds a basement air handler, so there's a, a shaft that runs from the top of the building all the way down in the air handler. This is one that you need to be cognizant of that if it was to, um, that's what feeds the air handler. So if you shut that down with it, during a test mode or whatnot, you will shut off all the air to the air handler which would potentially cause the air handler to trip out. So if you're doing a test, you want to make sure that you shut the air handler down. Um, other than that, uh, these are just for the smoke dampers. As you can see right behind Jeff, there's the numerous there's the dampers in them. So you can open and close them as necessary. Um, then you also have the, the exterior doors and windows. When you open um, these windows, I don't know if you want to look at them or not, but each one of the banks will open up, and it gives you also status whether it's open or closed. So, do you guys have any questions with it, or? It's on only one. This building has, has two air handlers. This is working only for one or for both? 
when a fire alarm was to come in, it would sh the fire alarm would shut down both air handlers. Mm -hmm. But it uh, the only reason this affects uh, because there's outside air intake right here, and so it blocks off any outside air from going to that to, into the air handler to blow, and it opens up so you have fresh air for these exhaust fans. So the outside air would suck in and blow out through those exhaust fans. Was there still an issue with that? It's that bottom, those bottom vents. So what we did is, if the fire alarm was to go off, it's not going to make it. It's not going to matter because the fire alarm will shut them down. But as far as the test mode, mm -hmm. there, what you would want to do is, is, we did put a safety in it. It's a section side on the air handler. So if somebody turns this accidentally, or if you forget in test mode, it will shut the air handler down. It'll trip the air handler off. But when you run your your test, whatever you, whenever you do it, would be recommended to shut the air handler down so you don't trip it out. Okay. So you can do that with that switch there, or no? You would just do it from the head end, Daniel, which is schedule the air handler off, or just go down and turn the unit off. Is it a manual trip? Yes, it's a manual reset. Just like a high pressure, it's on the suction side. Okay. Yep, same thing. So, um, that's really about it with it. Um, any other questions? Do you have to... Do you have to um, have the key turn. You have to have panel enable turn to have it function. Nope. So what this does is this key switch allows you to in, in auto mode. If any one of these switches are not in auto, it's going to set this buzzer off and it's going to be a constant buzzing noise. If you leave it in firefighters control panel, you can change any of the other switches and it won't. It's uh, it, won't you, alarm. it won't alarm it exactly. The whole purpose of this is just to let you know. Uh oh, I left something overridden here. So. So when you override a damper open, do it kick the alarm fire system off at all? No, no. I'm just receiving inputs from him that there's uh, smoke in the atrium or water flow in the atrium. Open up these windows. I guess. Can I open them right now? That's pretty cool. You got fire light under the. Uh, you got the tape. Oh, we sat here for hours playing this. <laughs> One thing to note too is, is that we do have a safety where if at least half of these doors don't open, the fans won't turn on. So that's something to kind of think about as well. So we want to make sure that we there's enough air that we don't suck, you know, we don't suck and shut like it. Yeah. These shut. <laughs> <laughs> They're shut right or now. They'll open up in a fire condition or if you manually open. So no, with this or with this. <laughs> they will if you control them, yes. Your hair's like sucking in. <laughs> So there's two sets, of, there's some keys here. These are the ones that actually open the glass cabinet. The other keys will actually allow you to turn it to firefighters mode, to silence the alarm. And that, that alarm that I'm talking about silence is just the panel that's that fuzzy noise. So, okay. Now, if I may interject something for uh, maintenance and uh, your future knowledge, located right up here are three large junction boxes. They have your power supplies and your relays in them. John's uh, control wiring coming over uh, gives you the position of it. They're all located right up here. All right, so uh, you can pass it on down to whoever needs to go up to, to, to the maintenance issue. You can do it right here. You can right up here. Everything's right there. And that's true. There's also right above here, there's a, it's a Johnson Controls panel. It's a smoke control panel. It's a UL panel and all that stuff. Um, so there's a Johnson Controls panel 
up there as well. So. Do we need to loop the window, any of that type of stuff, maintenance on any of that? I don't know anything about the windows or doors. I'm not sure on that one. <laughs> The, I don't know. The power supply for the rescue assistance panels is up there also. Okay. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> <laughs> also above the ceiling in here in the entry, there's a power supply panel for the rescue assistance panel where the batteries are located and the 120 comes in. So it's also got a battery backup, but it just had to be located above the ceiling as we were short for space on that wall. So just one, one more word of caution is, is if you were to use those bypass buttons on the fire alarm system to activate to give us an input for atrium flow um, or atrium smoke, just remember that you do want, still want to shut down that air handler because since the fire alarm's not actually going off, the fire alarm's not shutting down the air handler. So just word of caution before you do any testing with the smoke panel that it would be recommended to shut that air handler down um, through the unit or through the BMS.